In this setup I have two spheres and a transparent material. The sphere on the left is obviously invisible because the transparent material makes it transparent. It has no other properties so there's nothing to see. The sphere on the right on the other hand I'm mixing the transparent material with the diffuse shader using the layer weight node to control the factor and this effect produces a a good effect for doing things like planet atmospheres because here you've got a situation where it's transparent maximum transparency in the middle and it slowly becomes more and more opaque or in this case red as it approaches the the edge of the sphere this is similar to you know looking through a planet's atmosphere and seeing more and more dust until all you see is dust or you have very little light passing through it you can reverse the effect by swapping the inputs and it works predictably except in this case it's opaque in the center and transparent along the edges as you move outward. Now this effect this effect is actually pretty cool because what it does is it makes it look like a, a volumetric effect. The sphere is you're looking through more material through the center so it looks more opaque there and you're looking through less material along the edges so there's less effect there so you could use this to mimic a volumetric effect without using volumetrics which require a lot more processing power to to uh, to draw and calculate the thing is that this doesn't work like a volumetric because there's no scattering of light in here there is just light passing through it uh, so this this would only work for volumetric absorption this would, this only mimics volumetric absorption it does not mimic volumetric reflection which uh, how would you do that if I had a glossy shader to this could you mimic volumetric uh, reflection the problem is it would be glossy reflection it wouldn't be diffuse reflection um, I don't know. You could probably do it if you mix this, let's say, if I add another mix node, a mix shader, and add another diffuse shader with a, let's say, a different color, let's say purple, let's say red, and I mix that. that with this Is that with that instead uh, come over here come over here put that there you can do something like this where you just have a general red color over everything and then you have this opacity that increases towards the center that has a blue color uh, is this li does this look like a volumetric mm, I don't know it's not exactly the same because if you shine a light through this if you shine a light through this would it work like a volumetric I don't know that is a good question let me let me hide this backdrop here, red, check backdrop, what does that look like? Does it work like a volumetric? I don't know, I mean like I said, you would have to do tests by putting a light through there and see if you only see the light. I doubt it, because these effects are all surface effects. You wouldn't actually see a beam passing through it, you would probably only see a light spot on one face a light spot on one face where the where the light beam enters. A light spot on one face where the light place where the light beam en enters, and another light spot on the other face where the light beam exits, or maybe not even a light spot on the exit side because there is no. Well, it is a transparent material, so there might be one here, but um, but you probably wouldn't see anything inside the material since it's not a volumetric. 
it's only this only works for reflected light does not work for scattered light uh, no yeah it works for transmitted light it does not work for scattered light so only light that's passing towards the camera through the material is affected light that's passing through uh, through the material that does not go towards the camera is not affected by this material so yeah so you, if you want to use it if you need if you need to do a quick and dirty effect like a halo la, um, like particle halos you can do this this would work here's a setup that demonstrates what I was talking about earlier how light that passes through the object is not affected by uh, the material only the light that bounces towards the camera that is reflected towards the camera appears like a volumetric you can see here that the shadow being cast by the object is black it is not blue it does have the the gradient effect where more light passes through the edge than in the center but uh, the light is black so the light is essentially this is tr it's treating this as if it were just a shadow and not a volumetric it's not really volumetric absorption as long as you uh, it's not really volumetric absorption if you consider shadows. If you only look at it from the front, it's fine. But any shadows that this object might cast will uh, will not c appear correct. Uh, you can also see here the dark band here is because at this point there's no very little uh, there's no light coming from the front and there's very little reflected light hitting it and so it's mainly black because you're not seeing any light here and here it's blue because some of the light is being reflected off this diffuse material the, the diffuse surface and lighting it up from the back and causing it to be blue but you can see that the light that passes through the object is not blue it is black it's basically absorbed and it's either white or black and the same that is the case for the shadow so uh, do not expect this to work like a volumetric as long as uh, if you f do not expect this to work as a volumetric for uh, for all objects it only mimics a volumetric and only from the direction of the light source if there's a light source that is coming from a different direction the object is going to look odd uh, this may not even work then for halos it may work for halos that are emission halos if i replace this transmittance i'm sorry this transparency with an emission shader uh, what happens here I get that, but it's still a solid object, so I would need to mix that with the transparency. The transparency, so I have to mix these two together and these two together with an add shader. Add that to that. We get this. And so now I have light being emitted. Uh, let me make that blue so at least it looks right. Okay, so it's emitting blue light, but it still doesn't look right. And even if I make the transparency blue, what happens then? Does the shadow look? Oh, here we go. That's probably the case. The problem. The problem that if I use a blue transparency, all right that is that's what needs to be done need to use a blue need to put the same color on the transparency uh let me turn this to a point 8 then yeah uh well now it just looks see there here's the problem though if i make the transparency blue then it, it becomes virtually a solid blue ball except at the very edge uh Paint at the point nine. Wow. 
that's still that is still pretty opaque no matter what level I, cr I turn this down to 0.95 yeah if I, let me turn the saturation down on this and see if that helps um yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, you can play around with it, and it, if you, you know, you can play around with it, but it's not going to work perfect. Against the back black background, it does. It looks like a halo, and it casts light like like a halo except for the fact that it's uniform from the edge towards the center let me turn this down and again the center is black because as I increase as the th as there's more diffuse texture uh, more diffuse more of the diffuse sh shader gets used uh, there's less transparency and the blue light that that is being that is in the shadow comes from the transparency not from the diffuse shader so uh, if you want to increase the in a sense the hardness of the halo you end up getting a black shadow with a blue uh with a blue edge to it uh, so again you can i mean this might be useful in situations where the the halos are very far away but um don't expect it to work exactly like a halo uh and it's and not and don't expect it to work exactly like a volumetric i discovered an interesting effect that you can get by throwing in a color ramp between the output of the layer weight uh fading output and the factor on the mi the first mixer mix shader that mixes the transparent with the blue diffuse. Uh, you can produce an interesting effect like this, where the the maximum amount of diffu blue diffuse occurs in a ring around the center of the object, and then the rest of the material is 50% red around that. You can always, you know, change that to whatever you want. You want more red, less red. Um, whatever you want and this ring effect is there no matter what direction you look at the object from so if you look at it from this direction you still see the ring again this could be useful if you want to have multicolored halos if you want to generate a halo for a part for particles uh, that always looks like it's facing the camera you can do this um, you know you can put in more color stops in the color ramp and produce multiple you can produce multiple rings here uh you can add more diffuse color more diffuse colors with more mixers to have each one of them be a different color uh of course you could always have a diffuse you could always change set the color of the diffuse shader using uh a color ramp and the same output of the layer weight you can take the layer weight of the output of layer weight, run it through a color ramp, feed it into the input of the diffuse mixture. You, you know, you could do if you, if I did this, I would get that. Uh, so if I have this, and I could, you know, if I add another color ramp here and make instead make this uh, make this green. I now have this a you know a, a some you see you need some interesting effects uh, again so this is this would work great for you know particles that you need to use with cycles and a particle system uh, you would just use this texture because again it no matter what direction you look at it from it always looks the same and nothing changes here's something I came up with just fiddling around with the settings here uh, if you just get rid of the transparent node 
and the mix node you don't need those you can get an interesting effect like this where you can get what looks like a giant evil eye that's constantly watching you no matter what direction you turn in because the way the uh, the the facing output of the layer weight node, it's based on the direction that the camera is pointing. It always looks at you. So no matter what direction you turn the camera, that's always going to be looking at you. And you can, again, you can just put whatever you want in here. Uh, you could probably put, if you put a a texture here, I don't know if that would work. If you put a texture here, they would just end up with a... Because this is radial, this is based on the distance between here and here. If you use it as a texture coordinate, you might be able to generate some lines. I don't know, I have to, I'll have to try that, see if that works. Um, but yeah, if you do this, you can get what looks like an evil eye against this. This would work great with a particle system, or or uh, any other setup where you need something that's constantly facing the camera without having to rotate it. This is an interesting effect here. If I ch if I take the output, uh, okay, this is an interesting effect here. If I take the out Output of the layer weight, the facing output of the layer weight note, and feed it into the scale input of a noise texture, and then feed that color into a color ramp, and then feed that into a diffuse texture. Uh, I'm sorry, diffuse shader. I get this interesting effect where uh, it's kind of like a distorted rainbow but it doesn't exactly follow the camera it changes as the camera position changes here you see this uh, orange spot over here but as I move over to here it is now up uh, an orange spot up here and this is more yellow and now it's greener here so that orange spot is not in a specific spot it just gets more orange as I rotate in that direction and it's always on the edge of the ball as you can see here as I rotate more this way this orange spot stays at the edge of the ball as if it's moving as if it's moving away from the camera and it gets more and more and more orange so it's producing like a weird iridescent effect uh, because like I said it doesn't it doesn't stay static, it changes, but the change is very subtle and is not always the same uh, based on the position of the camera with respect to the object. So that's an interesting